Hello, we're Group M16, and this is our report on additive manufacturing in the biomedical engineering field. My name is Madison Osmond, and I'm here with Brian Ozon, Ryan Penny, and Heather O'Leary. The four, to the four topics within this field that are to be covered are education, training, and research, tissues, prosthetics, and dental implants. Swiss scientist Nicholas Kors has created a silicone 3D printed heart capable of 3,000 beats before deterioration. Kors states that his goal was to his goal was not to produce a heart ready for implantation, but to think about a new direction for the development of artificial hearts. These artificial hearts can aid in practical surgical applications for surgeons and help with cardiovascular system research in general. Existing organs can be 3D printed in order to gain more information about them. MRI scans are taken of an existing organ. The layers of the scan are segment, segmented together and then converted to a, to a stereolithography or STL file. The organ is then printed to physical form. This can aid doctors in finding abnormalities such as ruptures or growths, as well as practicing solutions to repair these abnormalities. Makota Nakamura, in his early studies, uh, has shown that human cells and inkjet droplets are of similar size. After six years of research in 2008, he had successfully printed cells into a biogel bio substance and created living tissue similar to a blood vessel. Some scientists speculate that rapid repair of bone and tissue is possible within the next decade. Pigs and mice are currently test subjects, yielding positive results. The image shown here is a is a flesh repair machine capable of spraying living cells to speed up the process of a healing wound. Bioprinting has been successful in printing proteins, DNA, and living cells. Because of these advances, tissue printing has been performed. Multi-layered skin, vascular grafts, and heart tissues are some of the tissue that have been printed. The image so shows a coronary artery being printed. The ultimate goal in cell printing is fully functional organs, and there is still much work that must be done before it is accomplished. The three main techniques used in printing tissues are inkjet printing, extrusion printing, and laser-assisted bioprinting. Both inkjet and extrusion printing use materials with low cell densities and low viscosities, making their printings have a lower resolution. Laser-assisted bioprinting uses materials with high viscosities and high cell densities. Therefore, their printings have high, a higher resolution. This makes the laser-assisted bioprinting the preferred method for printing complex tissues. Bioprinting tissues allows patient-specific designs with high structural complexity to be developed at a low cost. Human cells can be patterned onto the printed tissue, which would decrease the risk of patient rejection. The tissue, patient, rejecting the tissue as it can be made up of their own cells. These tissues can be printed with tubular channels that mimic the vascular architecture in humans. This is essential in creating tissue that can thrive once transplanted as they will connect with the patient's vascular system to achieve this. Two different inks must be used, a fugitive one and a stem cell laden ink. The fugitive can be washed away, leaving the empty channels. For now, functioning human organ printing is still only conceptual. But with the advances being made in bioprinting tissues, scientists are getting closer to figuring out how to print these organs. Most likely, the first practical organs that will be printed are simple ones, which may include kidneys and livers. More complex organs will follow, such as hearts. 
This is because hearts contain many different chambers that each have different functions. Ultimately, these organs would be patient-specific to decrease the risk of rejection. Traditional prosthetic manufacturing is a lengthy, expensive process whereby the patient goes through a plethora of steps to create molds on which the remaining artifact limb can be constructed. The materials used to form these molds are wasteful as a new mold needs to be created every time the patient goes in. Using traditional processes, the end products end up having simple geometries which are not aesthetically pleasing. With the development of additive manufacturing technologies, medical professions and engineers can produce prosthetics that are cheaper to produce for the patient. The 3D printed prosthetics can be faster to produce as the patients no longer have to create molds of their remaining limb. Instead, the patient is 3D scanned and the engineers can instantly have a solid model in which to produce the prosthetic. Added manufacturing allows engineers to produce artificial limbs that have more complex geometries with more advanced materials such as ABS plastic or titanium. Along with the addition of new materials, engineers are able to integrate electronic circuits into the prosthetics. The artificial limb will be able to sense objects and perform actuations based on neural signals from the brain. These prosthetics will give the patient a realistic feel to the artificial limb. Dentists have been using 3D printing technology since the early 1990s. However, back then it was restricted to making educational models and surgical implants. Now additive manufacturing in dental applications is used more so for rapid prototyping of full dental implants. Although we can currently create models of dental implants. Permanent and temporary ones are still not practical due to the lack of clinical research behind them. A well-known dental accessory company, Invisalign, has been using additive manufacturing technologies to create a cheap alternative to traditional style braces. However, this company has found themselves in the middle of a class action lawsuit recently, not because their product was not able to reline their customers' teeth, but because they were not designed properly and resulted in dental deformities. This proves that there's potential for 3D printing technologies in the dental industry with the proper research. First, a model of the deformed tooth must be created. This can be done through computed tomography images or cone beam computed tomography images. This is a recently developed type of x-ray which creates a digital model of the patient's deformity. Next, the deformity is converted to an STL file in some computer-aided design program. The following steps are essentially the same for every 3D printing process. The CAD model gets sliced into layers with a similar thickness, and the sliced model is sent to the printer, which begins creating it, layer by layer. Finally, post-processing is completed, like the removal of supports, sandblasting or grinding, and heat treatment for metals. The three main types of added manufacturing used in dental applications is fused deposition modeling, stereolithography, and selected laser sintering. Fused deposition modeling is when a plastic or metal wire is fed through a heated extrusion head and arranged in layers to create a solid part. It is considered a solid-based additive manufacturing technology. Stereolithography is when a solid part is created layer by layer through photopolymerization of liquid monomers. This process uses light to change the structure of the liquid molecules into solid polymers. Finally, selective laser sintering. Use, this uses a laser to bind a powdered material together to form a solid part. Some benefits of 3D printing versus traditional manufacturing of dental implants is a wide variety of materials that can be used. For example, plastic models can be created as cheap prototypes, or fully formed surgical implants can be printed that are ready to be implanted. In 2014, the introduction of multi-material 3D printing change the way we use this manufacturing as products that have previously had to be completed in multiple steps can now be done in a single print on one machine. However, the biggest benefit of additive manufacturing technologies is reduced labor for the dental technician, where they previously would have been responsible for overseeing all aspects of the model. He now only needs to get an accurate model using the previously discussed computed tomography and send the results off to a printing lab. Although there are benefits to using additive manufacturing technologies in dentistry, 
there are some major drawbacks would need to be addressed before the technology is used. Two of the major setbacks are a specific type of building material used in stereolithography is not approved for int intraoral use for longer than 24 hours. This means that the permanent or even temporary implants created from this type of material cannot be clinically tested. Another setback of 3D printing in the dental industry is that the high startup and replenishment costs, depending on the type of machine and material used. In the future, 3D printing dental implants is going to become increasingly common due to medical research about the long-term effects of these type of implants and the decreasing associated costs. Thanks for viewing our presentation on biomedical engineering. We hope you have learned some of the basic applications of additive manufacturing in the medical industry.